Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I'm Jim McKeith, and joining me on one side or the other here is Ian Barker. Hello. And we've got our helmets on, so we're protected from Roman, or I guess not Roman invasion, barbarian invasion? I'm not sure. Other uh, civilizations, yeah. Yes, other civilizations. Whoever it might be invading, we're ready to go. And with that, let's go ahead and get started with the webinar. I'm going to turn my camera off here, though. We have some slides, and then we're going to go into the uh, demos towards the end. This is the Ski for Delphi webinar. So I guess some of you may be not sure what Skia is, and if that is the case, well, you've come to the right place. So to get an idea of what Skia is, first, I want you to imagine that you're a software developer that needs to reach all the major platforms, right? We want to get on Android, iOS, Linux, Windows, et cetera. Now, traditionally, there's two choices. There's the native route, which gives you direct access to the hardware, but requires you to write separate code for each platform and often requires multiple teams, gives you the best user experience, but at the sacrifice of developer productivity. And then there's the alternative of web or cloud, and this gives you a lot of code reuse across platforms. You're gaining developer productivity and giving up the end user experience because you're detached from the hardware and you're losing access to features. Now, most likely you've heard there is a, another challenger in this arena. Fire Monkey is natively compiled, direct access to the hardware platform. You're able to use native libraries and get all the native functionality you want. It's also at the same time being multi-platform. You have one code base works across all the platforms. And to top it off, it has a great visual designer to maximize your developer productivity. Of course, hey, you've heard this before, most likely. What does this have to do with Skia? I'm glad you asked. And I'm going to turn it over to Ian now to talk a little bit more about Skia. Hi. Well, Skia is a very well-adopted project. It's a, a Google project originally, although it is effectively open source and widely available. So if you're a little bit nervous about Google being in charge, it's not quite like that, but they are, shall we say, caretakers, but not overall owners of what's going on. You know what it's like? It's extremely expensive to maintain a code base that uses direct low-level rendering APIs on different platforms and then trying to keep it drawing with fidelity and dealing with things like GPU optimizations and technologies. And so Google thought, well, this is a problem because we want to reach as many devices and phones. And that's really what their whole uh, ethos is about, being everywhere to everybody. And so they started to outsource the service of this graphics. And one of the things they did was they purchased a skier, which was a startup. They purchased that in 2005. So it's been around for quite a while and they've been maintaining it ever since with a few other people involved as well. The platforms that's available, Skier is absolutely everywhere. It goes, um, without saying, it's on Windows because most of our demos we're going to be showing right now are Windows. It's available on iOS, Mac OS, Android, and a few others. Weird, or shall we say, slightly esoteric versions like Tizen, Fuchsia, even Watch OS. Yes, if you've got a Watch OS device, this will work. You know, Skier stuff will work. And... What are the features of Skia? Its main purpose is to really generate very performant graphics. It is super fast. It does things like the basic things like shapes, paths, text rendering. It does um, SVG and it's a very good SVG rendering library. And we'll talk a little bit later about vector graphics and why SVG is the future. If you're going to try and target lots of div design devices, mobile devices that could have millions of pixels one day. No, I mean, it's pretty, pretty wide range of pixels, but if you're going to try and uh, render all the different sizes, SVG is the way to go. It also allows you to do things like WebP, animated formats, Lottie, yeah. telegram stickers. It also allows you to do things like anti-aliasing of images and do lots of parallel drawing as well, which is something that's actually pretty difficult to do. The weirdest inclusion is ability to do PDFs. And in the Skia um, project, there's a lot of examples of taking graphics and converting them in quite a short space of time into PDFs with just a couple of lines of code. The other thing it does, and this is probably of the most interest to Delphi people who are using FireMonkey is the advanced font properties. 
Now, it allows you to do lots of font weights and all the kind of things you would expect, and also custom fonts, which it does in a very simple way. And a little bit later, I'll show a demo with some custom fonts in. But it also supports the concept of font families. And those of you that have done web development will understand what font families are. It's where you say, I want to have a serif family. So if a particular font isn't available on someone's machine or on their browser, then it will fall back to different similar looking fonts gracefully. And that's what one of the things that uh, Skia provides for you, which actually Delphi doesn't currently provide in there. You can do all sorts of other things as well, like max number of lines. Oh, and just want to add something here. It does ligatures as well, which is where some fonts can specify that if two characters are next to each other, that they actually combine into a whole new character. And they also added the ability to adjust the kerning too. Yeah. I mean, that the, probably for Delphi people, the font handling, you would just think, why would I ever need another library to do fonts? Surely um, Delphi does all that. And yes, it does do that. But with uh, Skew for Delphi, it just uh, adds all those extra bits that you suddenly need when you need them. So you go along and try to do something clever on some graphics or lay a uh, screen, and you suddenly realize that in FireMonkey, you can't do right to left text. And with uh, Skew, you can do that. The right to left text, by that we mean uh, things like Arabic, Persian, Hebrew, and other similar right to left languages. What other things can it do? Image filters. My, my word. Lots of very fast, very cool image filters, and you can render the images and warp them and spin them and apply things like grayscaling and tinting and all the other things with the skier for delphi library if you were going to write a graphics app or build a graphics capability into your app so let's say you were a human resources program and you wanted to take a photograph of someone with a camera and then you want to tweak it because it was a bit shadowy or something like that. It needs to be uh, resized. But you could do that very simply in, in Skier for Delphi. You wouldn't have to add a massive great library. Just put the uh, Skier for Delphi image in there and then apply these effects. Easy. Okay. So what about Skier for Delphi? What is that? Skier for Delphi, as you might have guessed, is taking that Skier library from Google and making it so that it will work seamlessly in your Delphi programs. And I mean seamlessly. It's completely open source. It uses a modified fork of Google Skier, so there are some slight differences, basically, to make them work more smoothly with Delphi. It's cross-platform and multi-framework, and so it will work on FMX. Uh, multi-device apps, and it will work on VCL as well. There are some very smart, slightly different differences between the two, but it will work on those. It's a 2D graphics library for Delphi, so straight away you can draw all sorts of uh, things like a WebP image, which is becoming more popular, or an SVG, and also do some basic fundamental types of drawing like texts and animations and outlines, boxes and rectangles and all, all those kind of things. It also supports shaders, which we talked about, and we're going to show you shortly. But the most important thing as well is that it focuses on quality and performance. The two guys involved in this have worked extremely hard on this, the two brothers, and their name is Vinicius. And I apologize because I get his name wrong every time because I'm not very good at pronouncing that name. And Paolo, the two brothers are from Brazil. And they are the 2021 Spirit of Delphi winners. Palace is available there on GitHub, as you can see with the link that we've got on the screen at the moment. And Vinicius is also on there as well. They made us put this phrase in, and I want to call it out. They said, with the encouragement <laughs> and suggestions of Eden and Jim. And both Jim and I talked about this and said, we don't feel right about putting this on there. But they feel like we've uh, encouraged them. I can say for my part, and I'll let Jim have his say in a moment, but the reason that uh, I'm involved in it is because it's an incredible project and they work so hard on it. They really are deserving as the Spirit of Delphi winners. Yeah. When picking a Spirit of Delphi winner, we look for somebody that really, I think, has a big impact on what it means to be a Delphi developer. And honestly, I feel like this library and the amount of effort they're putting into it makes a really big difference. So. Yeah. And you know what? I think I said this to you the other day. The library isn't just good at what it does. It's not just the functionality. It's the absolute craftsman, craftsmanship that they put into it. It incorporates itself into your Delphi IDE seamlessly. It works so easily with your Delphi programs. It's literally a line of code. And they even have a helper now in the IDE that will just 
add all the things you want for deployment as well, because there's a little delay that needs to go for the deployment sometimes. It'll do all that for you. Everything about this project is best in class in terms of the code quality, the way they deliver it, their support for it, and the effort they put into so these guys work like crazy. And Jim and I are just in awe of them. Yeah. So if we gush a little bit during the webinar, apologies. But Ian and I are both very enthusiastic about this library. And so hopefully we'll teach you some useful stuff as well. But if nothing else, go out and check it out. I had a, an MVP that was a little hesitant to check it out. And you went and checked it out and came back and said, wow, it just worked. It made everything better. I love it. <laughs> so Absolutely. So Skia for Delphi, it's compatible. And so I just asked this as well. It works with a newer on Windows. And then for 10.3 and newer, it supports Windows and Android. And then 11 and newer, it works across all platforms. There is, it is not available for C++ Builder yet, but all the source code is up on their GitHub repository. If you want to take a stab at helping modify it and you can make a pull request or whatever and engage with them. And there, I'm sure would be happy to have your help in that capacity. Marcus just said, agree. Venetius and Paulo are amazing. Absolutely. They're very humble and just, they do amazing work and it's great. So the Skia for Delphi library is conceptually divided into three parts. The, the, the Delphi portion of it, there's the Skia API, which is what gives you access to the API, the controls, which are some controls you can use, and then app rendering support. Skia.pass is the unit that gives you access to all the Skia API, lets you reach in and grab Skia directly. So you can go look at the Skia documentation, and if there's something you want to be able to do, you can do it right straight from Skia.pass. If you, there's then the controls, these are available for both VCL and FireMonkey. The Skia animated image plays Lottie telegram stickers, animated GIFs, and animated WebP. I'm a huge fan of Lottie or Lodi, however you pronounce it. It's a fantastic framework. I think it's going to make a big impact. It's a fairly new, and I think it's going to have a big impact in graphics in general, but especially in application development, because they're really smooth animations and they scale up beautifully. The SK label is a text label, but it has additional things to give it more styles and functionality. You can do things like add a stroke to the font and change the kerning. It has ligature support. It has more complete Unicode support in the way it handles Unicode as well. The SK paint box has a, um, on draw event where you can draw on a Skia canvas. So this, if you want to do your own drawing, this is the way to go. And SKVGA is a scalable vector graphic image render. There's also the animated paint box, which is listed here, but it's the one that you can use if you want to have a paint box. It has a, a time element as well, a progress element. And so if you want your animation to change over time, you can use the animated paint box. And then app rendering. This is the thing. If you're building a fire monkey application and you're like, ah, I don't want to learn something new. That's fine. It download and install Skia for Delphi and one line of code, which I'll show you in a second, just uh, switches the backend rendering engine to Skia. And so it's, you still have, you're still using FireMonkey. You get everything in FireMonkey, you know, and love, you don't have to learn anything new. You can just take advantage of some of the optimizations that come from Skia, which can give you increase in graphics performance. I found little things like I had a track bar that I was moving. And it wasn't always updating correctly. And I was trying a few different things. I'm like, I wonder, and I switched, turned on the ski rendering and it just fixed that behavior with the track bar. And I know I could have fixed it another way, but it just fixed it automatically by this one line of code. And so one line of code to turn on the app rendering for FMX canvas is right there. You just go into your, I guess it's two lines of code. Technically you have to add skia.fmx to your users and your DPR. And then say global use Skia true. There's actually a, a couple other global flags, but that's the main one that will give you the big benefit for that. Sorry, Jimmy, it actually does uh, add that uh, uses clause in now. They, they added that just recently in 3.4. Oh. Okay, yeah. great. See, uh, Th Thomas just said, I've used Skia for Delphi for a while. It's such an amazing project, which resolves most FireMonkey bugs and limitations. Finally makes FireMonkey drawing thread aware. Yes. That, that's the big thing is that it fixes some threat aware things that I've dealt with. So this is some benchmarks they did. The biggest 
impact is on the older Android phones. You'll see the biggest changes here. And then here, the MacBook ARM ski is not as fast as Delphi, but they're being honest with their stats here. So the great thing is that you can, of course, you can turn it off. You can say, oh, it's a uh, arm, turn it off if you want to there. So as far as using it, you can install it from Git it or from their GitHub, or actually it's available on Chocolaty as well. And go to your application and you just right click and click enable Skia. And what this does is this adds the necessary libraries to the deployment manager and makes the changes it needs to your application. You can actually do some things without this, but it's a good idea to do this because it simplifies the deployment process. You don't have to, you can do it all manually. And there's native libraries for all platforms. And of course, the, all the components are added to the palette as well. I know people will ask, here is the redistributables. I went and looked at the sizes of all of them. They're automatically included and bundled in your applications. They're, they're a little bit bigger, but honestly, if you're making an application, that's a drop in the bucket compared to the size of an actual application. Yes, you can make a Hello World smaller, but none of us ship Hello World. <laughs> uh, I will point out that they have a different version of the Linux support for Ubuntu or Debian-based distributions versus Red Hat. If you're not familiar with what anti-aliasing does when you're drawing vector graphics or fonts, it gives this nice anti-aliasing. So when you zoom in, you can see, you see this more, but when you zoom out, it makes it look nice and smooth. It's a uh, great useful for that. And a lot of okay. people really saying the people that have used it have said amazing project, really great project. A lot of people asking about C++ Builder, which I'm going to get to Paolo and uh, Vinicius uh, to answer. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, everyone who says, wow, this is great. So uh, I think you and I are not alone in this, Jim. So Paolo and Vinicius are on, but they're not, they don't have the microphones on. They're not, they speak better English than I do Portuguese, but they're not comfortable uh, talking in English, which is fine. So they can help answer some questions too via text which I appreciate all that they do. They do so much. So I could go on for a whole webinar and I have on just vector graphics. I think vector graphics are phenomenal and always frustrated. I don't see better adoption form because the resolution independent, they can just scale up and look great everywhere. You can actually easily tweak them to change colors and stuff like that. SVG has been around for a long time. It's starting to get more traction now, but still not as much as I'd like to see. But I am super ecstatic to see it in Skia for Delphi because it's a great way to use that with your application. You can find thousands of free graphics online. I didn't bother listing places because they're everywhere. Also, if you're using Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator, you can create SVGs from there and import them right in. It's a great way to work with a designer and they can design UI elements for you and you can just drop them right on your app and look exactly like the designer designed them. And that's, that is so useful. A lot of the animations, these are fairly new. They're originally designed by Airbnb because they wanted to have a nice way to add this fluid, smooth animations across all platforms. They're lightweight. They say 600% smaller when compared to GIF. It depends on the resolution. And that's the tricky thing is that if you make the GIF very small, low, low resolution, then you can make the size difference better. Because with raster graphics like GIF, you have to describe all the pixels. Yes, it's compressed, but you're still describing the pixels. And the more pixels you put in, the larger it gets. Here's a few places where you can go to find Lottie animations. So why vector formats? Again, if you zoom in on a vector, it stays sharp. Because a vector graphic is describing the curve and the line. Whereas raster graphics has to have individual pixels and anti-aliasing, you, like when you render a vector graphic to the screen, it might be anti-aliased. But when you zoom in on the original, so you can think of a vector graphic as like the source code to your graphics. When you zoom in on it, you lose on a raster. So if you have a GIF, JPEG, PNG, or any other graphic format, really, you're going to lose the, the quality there. So I wanted to give an example of this because some people still don't seem to get this. And I, again, I could talk for hours just on when do you use JPEGs versus PNGs. I will try not to rant, but this is an example of a, of SVG. And annoyingly, I had to convert this to a PNG for Google Slides, but yeah, because Google Slides won't display SVGs for some reason. I don't know why. It'll export SVGs, but it won't display SVGs. Ironic, really, when you think you give it here as a Google project. <laughs> no, SVG is, yeah, I don't know why they don't do that. <laughs> but so here's the source. This is the source code of a SVG. It's XML, which you can easily compress via zip and it gets really tiny. 
Whereas JPEGs and PNGs, if you ever looked at them in a hex editor beside you, it's gibberish and they're already compressed. You're not going to get any additional compression on it. The difference between JPEG and PNG is PNG's lossless compression, which means that it, if you edit it or recompress it, you're not going to lose any quality or you're not losing any quality from what you created at, but it is a fixed resolution. So once you pick a resolution for a PNG, you can't, if you zoom in on it, you lose quality, whereas you don't with vector. Whereas JPEG's a lossy, which means it applies techniques to reduce the size of it that involve discarding some visual information. If your compression, if you have the high enough quality, it's not usually too noticeable, but if you want to have good, a good file size, you're going to turn the quality down. So here's a little size comparison of the Enigma logo. So if I zip it up, it's only uh, 2K, almost 3K. And that's a vector, so it can be resolution, I say infinite. And I say infinite, technically with a vector graphic, there is an optimal size, but you can keep zooming it if you want to. Whereas the regular one here is uh, 16 kilobytes, but then we go to a very low quality, a 30% quality JPEG at 1280 by 562, which is what all these raster ones are, and it's double that. And then we keep going up. Here's the PNG here. So this PNG is going to be an exact rendering of that graphic. So it, to get an exact rendering of that SVG is going to take almost, or it's going to take 99 kilobytes. Whereas a JPEG, if you go to a higher one here, it's going to, you know, to get decent JPEG quality, it gets up to 300 kilobytes. Now, some images are higher compression because this image, let me go back to it has a lot of similar pixels next to each other. It compresses better in PNG. JPEG works really well for photographs. If it's a photograph, a PNG will always be bigger than a JPEG. It'll be perfect. It won't lose any quality. So if you zoom in on this, that image that we created here, you can see here's the JPEG versus the PNG. So the PNG, we can see the pixels, but we don't have any of these artifacting that kicks in. And so this is from Beyond Compare, if you can see it down at the bottom, showing the differences from the two images, the PNG versus the JPEG. And then here we can keep zooming in on that uh, SVG and it looks fantastic. All right. What about vector animations? This is uh, Lottie animations, which again, I can't display a Lottie animation natively in Google <laughs> slides. So I had to convert it to a GIF, but the Lottie animation, so the Telegram sticker format is just a zipped JSON file. Lottie animation is a JSON file. So here, this one here, the JSON is uh, 583 kilobytes, but it zips down to 55 kilobytes. Whereas an MP4, which is lossy, so there is image degradation in there, you're going to get that down. It's going to be actually smaller than the JSON, but you've lost image quality and you can't enlarge it any. Whereas a GIF, has it's five megabytes, but it's lossless. And again, it's a fixed resolution. So where, why does all this matter besides displaying graphics? I, I mentioned this earlier, but you can go to a designer and have the designer design UI elements and use those UI elements in your application. And they will look exactly the same and replay uh, or, and, and be enlarged and stuff like that. So for example, here's a toggle switch and they've actually go out to Lottie files and they have a whole lot of toggle switches you can get. So you could have this toggle switch. They had one that was a cup of coffee that the coffee, like the cup was empty on one side and the handles turned around and went to the other side and then it filled the cup of coffee back up. Just such cool things like that. Like this one here, like the dark mode versus light mode is a great example of how the switch itself can convey its purpose. And that is a really big user experience thing. And then here's some example of loading icons, or here's a hamburger icon that transforms into different uh, icons, depending on what the user does with it or what's going on in the application. What this does, so the SVGs let you create these pure vector user interface layouts, elements, user elements, and have the UI elements. Lottie gives you the ability to animate that and give, make motion part of your user experience. And you could really easily just do a lot of really amazing stuff if you work with a designer on this and it, you can build it in After Effects and just animate these motion on the screen. So everything moves around as if it's an actual object. And that is what 
really improves your user experience because you give that motion to give, to help, ex help people understand what's going on. There's a question that just came up. Will the replay be available? Yes, there is a link in the chat where the replay will be posted later today, along with additional stuff. I'll post it here again. Replay. And yeah. So one thing I wanted to mention, and I don't have the blog post for yet, is the Skia for Delphi contest we have that will be starting. So it is both FireMonkey and VCL. I just saw that question come up. So we're going to have a contest. The Grand prize is a Mac mini, although if we get a lot of great entries, I will probably add additional prizes. <laughs> so we'd love to, the, actually the big prize, everybody, everybody that enters is going to have the acclaim of their peers because they're going to be like, wow, that's an amazing user interface you've created. That's such, so cool. So amazing looking. They're going to be excited and just think you're a wizard. So that's the big prize. That's the grand prize everybody enters with. <laughs> but all you have to do is create a application of Delphi 11 and Skia for Delphi hosted on GitHub includes images and videos, and you could be a winner. If nothing else, you're, like I said, you're going to get the acclaim of all of your peers because they're going to see the amazing work you've done. This is the blog post that'll have the replay and slides on it. That's not there yet, but when the, I will put the link from there to the contest, although the contest will have its own blog posts as well. Yeah, and also we are looking to feature um, some of these on things like blog posts and stuff like that as well. So if your project's, I don't mean to say it's not good, but if your project is something that demonstrates um, some cool features and things like that, of course, we want to make sure that plenty of people see it. We'd like to put it on some things like blog posts and webinars, maybe. We can't guarantee it, but uh, if they're worthy of that kind of attention, then we'd like to do that. So if you make a submission, make sure that we are allowed to do that. There's a little form. Um, that asks to uh, for you to uh, recognize that it's going to be used for that kind of purpose as well. Yeah. And Ray could also just point out that SVG, one problem with SVGs is, and you need to make sure that you're communicating well with your designers because if they make the SVG for a really large size and you want to use it in a really small size, it might get cramped looking or not really scaled out very well. Technically, SVGs have an optimal range of sizes. Technically you can make it as big or as small as you want, but you lose, there should be some, could be some visual elements that become too small when you make it small that need to be, the ratio needs to be changed within the graphic. Yes, you need to post all the code for it. Maybe we'll do another project later for non open source ones, but yeah, for right now, this is open source projects you need to post the code for. And with that, we're going to do some demos. This is a shader. It's programmed with Skia shader language which is a shader language that compiles down to run on the GPU and it runs across all platforms with every, all the frameworks and such. So it's running through Skia for Delphi. Now to show you, this is not pre-recorded, which it looks like in person. It looks like it's pre-recorded because it is 4K and incredibly smooth, which it's not gonna come right through the webinar, but it interacts with my mouse. So as I move my mouse, you can see it's interacting with it, which kind of makes it look a little jerky. And not only I could smooth that out more, but anyway, there it is. The program here, let me change my self dome here a little smaller. The way it works is here's the shader language and I can load in different shaders. I have a collection of these. All this will be posted. Fractal pyramid. It's kind of cool. This one doesn't interact with the mouse. And there's a lot of these here. They're all cool, I think. Let me load in Flame. No, that was also really cool. The crazy thing is this is just math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this looks so cool. So what are shaders? Let me go ahead and jump over here. I have some browser windows open. So shader language is a programming language for shader effects. You can use these, you can apply it to other videos, to text, to images, etc. Here's the Wikipedia page on it. The most popular shader language is GL shader language, which is OpenGL. The problem is, is it's specific to OpenGL. So if you want a shader language that works on Vulkan or Metal or whatever, you can't use GL shader language, but you can use Skia shader language. 
I will do a shout out here. Eric Van Bilsen has a excellent introduction to shader programming. So check that out if you're wanting more information. I do have all of my code for this sample is going to be on GitHub. It'll be public when you see this, hopefully. If not, check back later. And it may get folded into Skia for Delphi eventually. I don't know that my code's up to quality standards for the repository yet, but all of my shaders are going to be in here as well. I do have a document here, which is an overview of the differences between Skia shader language and Geo shader language. I pulled this from some Google Docs I found, but I've made some changes and additions to it as well. And Google does have, here's their uh, documentation on it, shaders. I found that this isn't complete. This isn't everything you need to know. So I found this other book here that's the Book of Shaders. That's a guide through developing shaders. I'm pretty sure between Eric's intro to shader programming and this one, you can learn the basics of shaders and then learn how to make it work with Skia. Now to show you where I got my shaders and how to adopt a shader to work in Skia shader language, I'm going to go out here to Shader Toy. And there's other websites that have shaders on them, but this is like the main hub, as far as I've seen, that has a bunch of shaders on it. People can come here and share, post their shaders. Other people can download them, look at them, etc. If you see this warning here, that just means the shader is very intensive and you can't see the preview here, whereas this one, I see the preview here. I'm going to take this shader, though, and convert it to work in Skia shader language. One note is when I'm looking at for a shader to convert, I look to see if it has other channels down here and such. Now, you can do those in Skia shader language, but they're a little more effort, and I haven't mastered that part yet. So I'm going to do this one because it doesn't have that. Another thing that is something you'll run into is macros. You usually see like pound define things here. You can convert those to either constants or functions, depending on what they are, or inline them or however you need to deal with them. But macros don't appear to be supported in Skia shader language. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go to Skia Shaders Playground and paste it in here. Now, right off the bat, if I run this, it's going to give me an error message. The minimum error I'm going to get is missing main function. And that's because in GL Shader language, it uses main image. But in Skia Shader language, you use main. And instead of passing frag color as an out parameter, it's instead the result. So I just change it like this and then come down to the bottom and change frag color to a return. and hit run, and it works. I want to, I usually include this in here so I can remember where it came from. And make sure I'm attributing it. It already has their name on there, but I like to be explicit. One note though is both here and on here, they have these inputs that are coming into the shader. So these are, variable decorations and they're being used in here. So when I scroll down here, we see um, right there, I times being used. And so I think all of them, there's I resolution. All of them use I time and I resolution. The rest of them are occasionally used. When you're importing this into your own shader language application, these aren't assumed. These are only assumed on the playground sites. So you need to include those. So if I go back to my application here, Let's run it and bring open the editor. I have those already at the top. So let's just copy this here. Okay, erase that. Make sure I don't have the extra thing. It doesn't understand tabs, but that's all right. And I hit run. Oh, it worked. <laughs> ah, awesome. So... There we go. There is a new shader been imported from GL shader language into Skia shader language on Skia for Delphi. One of the cool things about Skia shader language is it works across all platforms. It doesn't require OpenGL or any special drivers to be installed on the platform. So if it's the platform running Vulkan or Metal or whatever, Skia shader language works. Show you the Delphi code here. So I have a SK animated paint box on my form. I turn off the animation. I then load it from the memo. And I also pass in a, a string 
this gets any error messages. So if I get an error message, I just check for that and display it. If there are no error messages, then I create a paint by uh, calling create, and then I have it make for shader. I will point out, this is kind of cool. There's a make for blender as well, which I haven't messed with yet, but that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> then I set the duration on the paint box to max double, which is the biggest value it can be, which basically means run forever. If your shader does have a runtime, then you can change that or specify it here. Call redraw and then turn animate to true. Inside here, I have a event handler on on animation draw. I check to see if I have a shader and paint box to find. If I do, then I look to see if it has these uniform input variables. If it does, I pass values in for it. And then on mouse move, I do the same thing for iMouse. That's it. That's all there is to it. Oh, one more thing I want to show is in here with shaders on windows, you want to set global use ski or raster when available to false because for shaders on windows, they work better if you do that. So you don't have to do that, but they will be faster and work better on windows. You don't have to do this, but because everything I'm doing is Skia, but I think it's a good idea anyway, and that just uses Skia for the rest of the FireMonkey stuff. And this also works in VCL, but since this is a FireMonkey application, it works across all FireMonkey platforms they want to deploy it to. I haven't uh, messed with it or tested it on there, but in theory, it should work. And there we go. That's a quick intro to uh, Skia shader language with Skia for Delphi. As you probably saw, if any of you saw our hype videos, because Jim and I got a little bit overexcited, made all sorts of videos, as you do. This is also a demonstration of shaders as well. If you go to Shader Toy, you can see all sorts of shaders. I, I think Jim just mentioned that. So you've seen what shaders can do. This is a project that was written by the uh, Skier for Delphi guys themselves. I take no credit for this whatsoever. I did encourage them, and so did Jim. But it's basically a very simple project. All that we have is one form. And on that form is a SK animated paint box, which is one of the controls that comes with the Skier for Delphi thing. There's actually only a few controls for Skier for Delphi because everything else it does is magic in the background. And including comments in the code, there is only 207 lines of code. If you are uh, sensitive to flashes, I just want to give you a fair warning. There will be some flashing lights. Um, but if I run this a project now, and off we will go. I'm just going to resize this, a little bug to do with my resolution. But those of you that are familiar with the old 1980s games, like Breakout, which I think was one of the things that Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak worked on many years ago, this is an implementation of a similar game for that. We won't call it the B word because it's probably some lots and lots of lawyers in the background are going to. It's a game where you're trying to break out of some bricks. That's the one, yes, yes, but yeah. good, good, good save, yeah. <laughs> so uh, as you can see, whilst I play this very badly, you can see that I'm moving my keyboard. I've got a very clicky keyboard, so I'm sure you can hear that. I'm going to stop in a moment. But as you can see, the balls are going away, and it's knocking out bricks on this wall. And if I just swap for a second and by closing this, I can take this screenshot, which I took earlier on, of what's going on. Now, one of the key things of this game is that first of all, I'm using my keyboard to move this particular element of the graphic. And uh, there's some game physics going on. When the ball comes down and it hits this uh, little bat there, it backs back up again and it, it finds a collision in these wall bricks or whatever you want to call them as lozenges or something like that. Also, there's flashing in the background. And the Skier for Delphi guys, for Paolo in particular, mentioned that they're also able to play sound in the background. Now, this demo, they did get it done rather quickly, and they didn't get time to put the sound in, but they can actually have the shaders playing sound as well, because shaders have got a language, a programming language in the background that makes all these beautiful shapes and flashing going on, and the music. It's usually the music's from a static site. You get the general gist of it. And you can see, even on the resolution that you'll get on this webinar, which is not full quality, it downsamples the animation. It's pretty incredible. And what's even more incredible is the absolutely tiny amount of code in there. It gets some assets and creates some parts. And then most of the code is really just to do with what's happening when I press my keyboard. And then it does the drawing here, as you can see, the, the little bit of code to draw it, and then renders that shader. That's it. That's all the code in an entire game. Now, 
that's cool enough. But what's even cooler is that this is a fire monkey project. And because it's a fire monkey project right away, this game works on windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android out of the box. It will uh, work straight away. And not only that, but the guys have actually told me that they've included all of the um, projects in their project ready to go. And even better than that, this is a demo that they're giving away on the website as well. It's a, a good uh, demonstration of how the thing works. Go to the uh, skierphadelphia.org site and they will be putting the demo up. They want to tweak a few more things because we pushed them for time and it was, um, it was it was released before it was ready in every way. And they are perfectionists, these guys, but that's how it works. Bing. I think uh, if that doesn't give you some idea of what can uh, be done with the Skier Philadelphia, I don't know what. And then the other one that I just very briefly want to show, because some of you may not have seen this, this is a, a demo. Uh, by the way, that demo will be on the, uh, that's written by the Skier Philadelphia guys, and it will be in their demos shortly on their website. This is a project that I wrote. You may have seen it before if you come to our Skier for Delphi webinars, because I think I did it on the desktop first or some, some other conference. One of the many things that I uh, do webinars for. And this is all done with uh, Skier for Delphi as well. And any Star Trek fan will be able to tell you what this is. This is a imitation, shall we say, of a space computer, the LCARS interface. If you're a Star Trek original series fan, then you'll know immediately what that is. And what we've got here are some um, skier for Delphi controls. And if I hit LF11, you can see it's a skier animated image. And this one is an SVG. And uh, there's some more animated images here. These are Lottie animations. So they're basically a bit of XML and, and it draws the animations. These are just simple shapes, as you can see, T-shape and a few other things as well. In the background, there's some source to make things render. But let me just run that for a second so you can see what it looks like when it's running. Oops. Oh, dear. What did I do? Oh, I broke it. Oh, no. It was working the other day. No, what did I do? Ha. There you go. It, 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 when I opened the project, it automatically added skier, skier in there. So it's playing sounds in the background, which I'm just going to turn off because we don't what those on. But as you can see, key things here are the font handling that Skier does. This is a Klingon uh, custom font. It doesn't say anything meaningful. It's all random uh, text. And uh, here's some colored fonts. And then there's some nice uh, column fonts and uh, justified and all the rest of it. Here's some text. There's your SVG. Here's a nice custom Star Trek-y type font and the animations. And all of this is done using open source stuff. I, I didn't create any of this myself. I just drawed them all together, put them in the same place. But it's a simple little demo, but it gives you some idea of some of the things that just straight out of the box you can do. You can get much better animations than these. I just picked ones that look vaguely Star trek -y. But it's very cool. And all of it's enabled by um, Skier for Delphi. You can download this from their website and uh, go to the repository. It's all open source. And uh, most of the code that you see there actually is really to do with generating like random lines of text. So actually it's nothing to do with the skier stuff. It's just because I wanted to show some plausible text on there. And there you this go. Is a, this is a VCL sample too, right? Yes, this is a VCL sample. There is someone cleverly has raised an issue against my sample and said, do an FMX version. The difference between the FMX and VCL samples is that in the VCL, these animations here are not transparent. Okay, let me just turn the sound off. On the FMX, this planet background here would be transparent. You probably can't see it very well on the webinar, but this planet image has got a black background, which by default is transparent on FMX. And therefore, the radar sweep actually seems to go around and hover over the top of the planet because I put the Z order so that the radar sweep was on top and it looked like the radar had detected the planet. But that's the only real difference um, between the FMX and the VCL versions. But yes, this is a VCL project and it's good to go. You can use this out of the box and see some of the nonsense I did to uh, make it work. But it gives you some indication of how to load custom fonts and lay it out, put colors in, and uh, play animations. It's not too difficult, the animations. Load the animation in and uh, get it to play. Same with the font. Their font handling is fairly easy. There's a bit of uh, font handling here. It loads in a open source font, which I do reference in my notes. I put an attribution in there from where I got it loads the font in, uh, creates the font, 
and then uh, chooses a yellow color and that's it that's your custom font loaded so it could be any font you like and yeah like that, you it, can it, load it, the font in your application it doesn't have to be installed on the computer that, that's a really it, big thing correct yes and and actually in my notes i actually put attributions where i got these from and that font library.org has got thousands of fonts i didn't find just one klingon font i found about 15. so if there's 15 klingon fonts you can bet there's all sorts of other types of uh, font that you could ever want i just go to my github and get it there but actually it's a lot easier if you go to the skier for delphi.org um, site and then go to the uh, repository and they credit me there very nicely i didn't do any of the hard work i just wrote a simple program they did hard work. We are getting top of the hour here. We'll keep answering questions. I have a couple more demo videos I want to play. And that one question that's come up repeatedly um, sure. whilst you're talking about, and that is a lot of people have asked about C plus builder and currently it does not work with C plus builder. That's my understanding, but it is one of the things on the roadmap that they're hoping to look at. They are very much focused on Delphi, but my understanding is that it wouldn't be massively impossible for it to work on C++ Builder either. Thank you, everybody that's asked that. And it looks like there's a, a big demand for C++ Builder as well. And if you're interested in C++ Builder, download the source and take a stab at it. And maybe you could make a pull request and you can make some progress towards it. Yeah, good point. These are some cool mobile demos of Skia for Delphi. I love the splash screen, which is a Lodi animation. Here you can use a paint box to sign and it captures as a signature and converts it into a PDF. And then we can render a QR code with the really cool telegram animation there in the middle. I wanted to show how the splash screen works in the sample application. First of all, on the main form, there is this animated logo here that is not visible. So I come down here and I said visibility true. Let me pop myself down here in the corner. And you can see the logo there. This is the animation we saw when the application runs. It's on top, but it's set to visibility equals false. And then if we go into the form event handler on form create, we see that the animated logo is visibility is set to true. It sets the form to purple, which is the first color of the splash and brings it to front. And that starts the animation. And then here we see animation finished event handler, and then it switches it back. It changes it back, puts it changes it to invisible and then changes the color back. And then I didn't see what this one here is. OYT content. Oh, that's the main content block. So then on the application properties, application if we go to android oh it's icons the splash screens are disabled now if your application took a long time to create then you'd want to put a static like solid color splash screen like the first frame from your lottie splash screen on there and that would just be there for a second and then it would go into the animation so that's the kind of the, the trick for how that's done i think it's really cool very beautiful effect when to walk through some samples of the ship with Skia for Delphi, just to give you a look around it. First of all, I'll point out that there is both a Fire Monkey version and a VCL version of this. The other ones are other samples I have, but these are the two that ship with part of Skia for Delphi. They, all the functionality is that the same between them for the most part. I'm not sure where of any differences. I'm going to go ahead and go through the Fire Monkey one real quick. Fire Monkey, of course, has the advantage that it could run across all the platforms. So these shows the controls. There is actually more controls. Let me slip over to the side here. There's a couple other controls that are available that aren't in here, but they're um, more specialized. But these are the main controls you want your pulp to be using. There. Animated image. This one I love because I'm a big fan of Lottie graphics. They're uh, vector-based graphics. Rocket. A check mark. It also does telegram stickers. Very cool, which telegraph stickers are Lottie graphics, and then does animated GIFs and web, which is Google's graphic format that they're pushing. You'll probably see that. Mm -hmm. Label is a label that has additional effects. It handles Unicode and right to left emojis really well. 
and it has some additional features you can do with it as well. They don't have a sample for it yet, but you can actually change the spacing of the fonts and the, the characters within the font and add a stroke to the fonts as well. Here's right to left. Just for the text. Lots of cool features here. Let's see. I'm going to go just a couple quick in here. Let's see. So here's some interesting, you can do filters, which a lot of these existed in Fire Monkey, but this is using a different, this is using the ski engine instead of the Fire Monkey engine behind the scene. Particles is pretty cool. Interacts with the mouse. I'll let you go through some more of these later, but I want to show you real quick how to dig into the code. If you're like, oh, that looks cool. How do I do that? So the way the samples are laid out here, there is, you have base viewers and then the forms, okay? What you'll find is this is the navigation here. So this is the main page. And for example, here's the particles one, okay? And then if you click on the speed button, which is that there, and go to the event for that, you'll say buttons with particles. And in here, it's going to instantiate right here, form animated paint box viewer, which is right here. Okay. So these navigation forms instantiate a form with, from a viewer form. And so that's where, so this is injecting an event handler in here on mouse move and show into this to set things up. So you have to look at both. It's a really cool architecture, but at least for myself, it took a little while for me to wrap my brain around how to see the sample code. Cause I'm like, it's just magic. It works. Cause I couldn't find out what was going on here. So that's the basics of it. If you look in both places, that's really the key is you gotta look in both places to figure out what's going on. You could always, of course, set a breakpoint and trace through it and see what things are happening. But a lot of it is handled through event handlers. For example, especially with the paint box, you have to put an event handler on the paint box so that it can respond to events of the animated paint box. Especially. But anyways, that's the basics of it. A lot of cool demos. Actually, the documentation is great. So just check the documentation out and the samples and you'll be surprised some of the cool features are in there. And I'm sure you'll figure it out very quickly. Lodi or Lottie. I'll mispronounce it, I'm sure, is a JSON-based animation format. So everything you see here, these are Lodi files. It's originally by Airbnb. That's the documentation here. There's another great website that has information on it as well, which is Lodi files. Now they have uh, animations you can browse and they're all free, they're on here. They do have links to a marketplace where you can buy them as well. But if you just go through the browsing section, you can browse all these for free or search them or whatever. One of the cool things about them, they're really small file size. And they are the sticker format for Telegram animated stickers, which is one of my favorite messaging platforms. They have a subset. They require that they don't exceed three seconds. They're exactly 512 pixels or 60 frames per second, and they're a certain size. So the body moving plugin, you install the body moving plugin and to After Effects, and that's the easiest way to create these. And Telegram has a fork of that that creates it with that subset of requirements. You can get the stickers straight from Telegram or from here on Lodi's website. You can come download them as well. So let me show you how to get them out of Telegram. Oh, and then last, of course, they're supported both the .lodi and .json. Although it's the same thing, just a different extension. Telegram sticker, which is a JSON file that's been compressed, zip compressed. It's all supported in the SK animated image in both VCL and FireMonkey. So Telegram. You can do it from the desktop or from the mobile, but you go to Sticker Downloader Bot, which is by Cloudflare, and you find a sticker you like. So you scroll through all the stickers and you're like, uh, let's go with this one here. And I just say share stickers and copies the link to the clipboard. And then I come here and paste it in there and hit enter. And in just a second, it gives me a link to download it. Open that up once it finishes. There we go. 
and in here is the stickers. Apparently I opened it twice. Once you've done that, then you can load it into Delphi in your sticker browser. There you go, here's my sticker browser. Now, there are Lodi animation browsers available from their website download and that supports Telegram stickers, but they're terrible, they don't work. <laughs> it was really frustrated. So I had to make one in Delphi to even be usable. So this actually is gonna be useful beyond just, uh, it's a cool Delphi demo, I think. I'll show here. So this is the SK animated image and you just come here and say open um, just stickers Spartan and you find the, the sticker you want to open and open either the either type and there we go. That's how you open it. But then to open it programmatically it's pretty simple. You just have to load it from file. This probably needs to be cleaned up some, but on the create here, I just go look for the files and find any files that match. Let's see, list box items. Oh, that gets the directories. Ah, and then load the telegram stickers is here. So there's where it gets the files. And then I get create a animated image. This is going to be the preview across the top and I load from file the file name, and that's it. So I'll go ahead and run this. So it's gone through and enumerated all those directories. This is all of my Telegram stickers I've downloaded. I won't be uploading all of these, but I there are some that I got from, and I'm not sure exactly what the status are of stickers that you downloaded from Telegram, but the stickers I've downloaded from Lottie Files I know I can share. So I have a little button here so you can randomly jump to stickers at random. And anyway, there they are. You can pause them and you can loop through them or go through individual frames, whatever you want to do with them. I just think they're cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the uh, Telegram sticker browser. I want to show you how to export them from after Effects. So if you haven't used After Effects before, there's lots of tutorials online for this, but you basically you set your layers here and then the layers you put different things down and then you have keyframes and you can set effects like rotation and stuff like that on the different frames. And then once you get it how you want it, after you've installed the extension, and I've installed both the original body movement and body movement for Telegram, you just come in here and say, export body movement for telegram and you specify a destination folder which i've already got specified just with the browse and select it and hit render and that's it i'm going to render it again because it takes a second well a few seconds but there you go it's done it rendered it and that's all there is to it to create a uh, sticker or a loady file now there are a lot of after effects templates out there that are free and as long as they're not like pulling in like graphical elements, if they're just doing, in this case, they're pulling it from Adobe Illustrator or SVGs, then you're fine. So those are vectors. So as long as you're pulling in vectors, you're fine. But as soon as you start pulling in rasters, you're not going to be able to use that. Well, you might be able to use it in Lodi, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure you can't. But there you go. So there's a question here about does Skia for Delphi require an OpenGL capable driver on Windows or does it use Angle when using GPO based rendering? It can default to CPU rendering, if I understand correctly, but it will use GPU and it's not tied to OpenGL either. So it can be used other uh, GPU based rendering. And I don't know all the details on that, but I, so I put the links in the chat for the two samples there. I did make some changes from the, especially the, the, thicker browser because I cleaned up a few things in there to make it a little bit work a little bit more reliably, hopefully. And the sample stickers are up there as well. So you can go out and grab those on GitHub if you want to. So Stefan says rendering is instantaneous, but I wanted to control the caching and redraw. Venetia and Paolo are great and very helpful. So explain things to me in simple terms. Yeah. Every time I have had someone come up and say, raise an issue. I swear they don't sleep. I know you don't sleep, <laughs> made that clear. but uh, I swear they don't sleep because they are very responsive. They can't keep this pace up. I 
swear they will, you know, they're young and they'll learn and soon they'll want, they'll understand why I don't have any hair left, but they're very responsive. <laughs> they, they do their best to address any issues. There are going to be issues. This is cutting edge stuff. They've really pushed this project out with amazing velocity on their, on what they're doing. I'm really, I can't say enough good things about these guys. They're really a couple of uh, heroes when it comes to coding. But they're doing the best. So I ask, what's the main differences between the Fire Monkey paint box and the Skia for Delphi paint box? The Skia for Delphi paint box, you're drawing on a Skia canvas, which has additional methods that aren't available in the Fire Monkey canvas. And if you're using a Skia paint box, you're going to automatically be using the Skia rendering engine instead of the Fire Monkey rendering engine, which may in that most tests it's faster, but there may be some situations where it's not. So it's good to have a choice. You can use a fire monkey paint box and then set the global use Skia render engine if you want to, and then you can use you're using it in both. And then that way you can, depending on if you want to use the fire monkey interface or the Skia interface. So there is, it's a different canvas you're drawing to at that point and you have different methods that you can use it. Actually, I did one, I didn't publish it, but there's one sample I did where I actually combined because there were some methods I didn't have on the skia one that I, uh, I think one thing we, we probably should reiterate as well, because maybe we didn't make it clear, you don't have to use any of those controls at all. You don't have to use any of the skia controls because this is a library that adds functionality to the underlying runtime system. Shall we say what's going on? If you, if the only thing you ever do with Skier for Delphi is get your FireMonkey app and turn on the global use Skier, your FireMonkey apps will go a lot faster when it comes to graphics and things like that. And if this is not fiction, they have benchmarks that prove the case. And well, they, it looks like they're the arm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with some caveat, <laughs> I think that's the way to that, but say it. You can change it on, if it's on our on Mac OS, turn off the flag and then you're. Yeah. It's conditional compilation for the win. And that's what multiple projects are for. But it, but the, the point is that if you do nothing else with Skia, if you go, ah, oh, I don't care about Lottie animations. I don't care about custom fonts. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. If you include this Skia for Delphi project, the, the library in your FireMonkey apps, they will improve the quality and the rendering speed of graphics and things like that. It's not that there's anything massively wrong with FireMonkey. It's just that Skia for Delphi is leveraging the Skia library, which is extremely efficient and very fast. And, uh, and if you turn that library on and say global use Skia, all of a sudden your apps will just go bing. And uh, we've had quite a few people comment and say, oh, I've been using the project. Wow. You know, wow. What a difference. And the other one is the SVG images. I see a lot of libraries out there for SVG. The, the, the only one control, if you don't want to do anything fancy, use this, their uh, SVG image, because it can load all sorts of types of images that actually relative native Delphi can't do. And it, it can make a big difference. A rendering of SVGs is a bit of a black art. And, uh, and some libraries do it mostly well, but this is the only one I personally found that did it right every time for the SVG. Yeah. Don't worry about not, if you think you could never use any of the other controls, just use the library. Hey, why not make your Fire Monkey apps go faster? Mm -hmm. So, uh, someone's asking, does it make Fire Monkey controls work faster? Yes. I had a, a specific scenario where I had a track bar actually in my telegram sticker browser, that track bar at the bottom, when it was playing to show the progress, I was using track bars, progress bar was skipping. And I'm like, oh man, and I started to mess with it. And I can, I, I've had that before and it's like, there's things you can do to fix it. And I was like, I wonder, and I went and turned the global flag on and it fixed it just like that. I'm like, that was it. And I switched it back and it went back to skip it again. And I turned it back on and it was fixed it. So yeah, it all, yeah. So it does. It's, it's like magic The someone here just commented that they started using that on Sunday and using SVG backgrounds for buttons and it really changed the UI for better worth its weight in gold. So yeah, that someone else asked about that. If you could use like a loading in the background and put controls in front of it. Yes, absolutely. I did. Yeah. The, the space computer project does exactly that. That's exactly what it does. And it, if it's a fire monkey app, then you get that transparency. But if it's VCL, you can still do it. It's just that the animations can't be transparent, but you could have your water effects on a splash screen. And then you could have an okay button or something else or some version control information or something over the top of the, the animation, and it will render perfectly well. 
and it will not get you know, jittery and moving around whilst it's rendering. So it's really extraordinary. Welcome to our cult that Jim and I have been uh, <laughs> developing for the last month. Both of us saw this library and both of us have been developing for a long time. We've seen a lot of things come and go in terms of technology, but both of us, and we're not the only ones. Other people in Embarcadero have also said this as well. It was just one of those projects where you go, wow, this is just a no-brainer. This really is something you've got to got to look at because if you decide not to use it that's fine that's optional nobody's forcing it on you but i can't think of any reason why you wouldn't use it <laughs> I, mean, I, I really like that the it's one of the things i love about delphi is that you have breadth of options available to you and you can make that choice you're like hey i want to use this or i don't want to use this and plug it into it yeah rapid application development that's why it's called rat studio you know, yep. plug it in and uh, off you go. And the whole hard work's done for you. The two brothers in Brazil, they've done all the hard work and it makes me and you look cool. To be fair, I just basically took their hard work and showed it. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. It's a great. So, one, yeah. so yeah, someone's saying Flutter. Yes, Flutter uses Skia as well in the back end. Yeah, ex exactly. So now we have the same thing here in Delphi. And if you look at, as far as using the uh, controls on top of it, if you go look at my shader demo that I posted the Git on GitHub, you can see that it has the hamp, the speed button hamburger icon is over the fader effect that's running in the background and it just, it works. It just, I was like, oh, can I do this? And it did. And I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> it just worked. So it's like Steven saying, I don't use FireMonkey and Windows VCL only can vector would just be used in email browsers, such as Outlook. I don't know about email browsers or Outlook, but the, all the Skia stuff works great in Delphi as or in, VCL, Ian's example of the space computer is a pure VCL application. You can use all the vector graphics in there. I think you can release so as well. It was deliberately to demonstrate that you can do stuff in the VCL. Just, like, I mean, FireMonkey, you can do cool animations and things like that. But uh, VCL, you usually need a lot, lot of extra help. And not the case with this library. So Glenn said he used the skier for Delphi last year. So back in the old days, on a Delphi, an Android application, it went... It, 22 data points a second at 60 frames per second, smooth running graphics. Mark Richard says, I can't believe I've been on here 80 minutes. Really great presentation of a really great system. It's all down to the skier for Delphi guys. Jim and I obviously have some spatch on skills to do with their presentation, but these guys, this is their hard work. What they're doing is, and obviously the Google skier project as well, but I'm glad you think the presentation went well. Jim is very good at it. I just come along to just make it an item. So it's not, we can't just have Jim all the time. Plus I have the right Delphi helmet. So. All right. I think we got through most of the questions. I appreciate everybody being on here. As I pointed out, it's been over 80 minutes and actually I'm late for another meeting. I think you can use regular GIF, PNG, et cetera, in the image animation components. Yes, you can. Yes. I don't know about animated PNGs, which is a subset of PNG, but I know it does animate just, it does regular PNGs. Someone commented that we love Delphi, but we are old guys. So I do have a, a nephew that just got into cybersecurity actually. And I showed him some things at Delphi and he and some friends of his are like really excited and want me to do another boot camp from because they're, they're, they had a couple things. They're like, ah, oh, I wish I had a program that does this. Oh, 20 minutes in Delphi. I'm like, what? And I showed him and they're like, ah, oh, this is amazing. And so <laughs> they, and he took a class, he took classes in school on programming and stuff like that. But I, I love programming. I love the programming language, but you can just be so productive in Delphi. It's amazing. And you get great stuff done. So this is exciting. VCL applications, Skia, what must be installed on the computer? Only EXE. So there is a DLL mm -hmm. that is redistributed. Oh, you were going to type that then. I was going to type that. <laughs> um, it's a, you had the slides, you just go right click on it, say enable Skia, or you can deploy it manually. It's a second DLL. If you really are, I know some people are like, I don't want any DLLs. I understand not having, so there's two types of DLLs. There's the DLLs that live in that central shared folder that keep getting changed by every other program that can install the computer. And that is a headache. That is a mess. Nobody wants that. But if you have a DLL that's deployed in with your executable, then Nothing else should ever touch it. It's great. If you really want to though, I'm sure you can find a way to embed it in your EXE and not have to deploy it, but I would not recommend. 
load library from a resource. Interesting. Yeah, it is possible. And with the, obviously with the mobile versions, there's static linking as well. So the objects are statically linked in. So there isn't that same kind of uh, deployment. In 3.4, they've added the uh, capability when you select deployment, it actually copies over the uh, DLL for you. It, you don't have to remember to do it, does it? Uh, depends if you use deployment when you write Windows apps. Not everybody does. All too shy was incredible. Yeah, everybody seems very, it seems like we, it was a hit, Jim. I think the, uh, <laughs> I, I will point out the, uh, the breakout demo you showed that was using, there was a lot of sk shader code behind the scenes as well, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. All I meant was the stuff that I had to write, cause that's all I ever care about. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, 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 this actually goes back to a slightly on message, uh, thing here, which is the thing about Delphi is it, when you write a Delphi program, it's not that you, there isn't any code to make it do things. It's the amount of code you write, how much code you personally have to write. And so if you're using component libraries and you pick them well and you use open source ones or pay a modest amount for some of the third party libraries or, or use something like Skier for Delphi and the shaders, it's about how much code you personally have to write to get your projects doing things. And that's what I like about Delphi. It is the original low code solution in that respect. There's a ton of code hundreds of thousands of lines going on in the background because it makes you look cool when you compile and it says 150,000 lines code, but you've only written 10 yourself. But that, that's the benefit. Okay. We've got a, a linker that uh, pulls out all the unnecessary nonsense as well. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, there will be most likely be more Skia content in the future as well. I will have the replay posted and then I'll try and post the individual demos out as well. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Do go out to the Skia for Delphi code repository. They have a sponsorship option. Go sponsor them or tell them thanks. Give them a star. Send them a message. These guys are really working hard on this. And yes. And let them know how much you appreciate them. I, honestly, that's why I, one of the reasons I nominated them for Sphere of Delphi Award is because of the day we're doing, working really hard and it deserves some recognition. So. Absolutely. Totally 100% agree. Um, they do want sponsorship. They have got a lot of work on, by the way, uh, for people who ask him, can they do custom projects? They told me how busy they are and it's very busy. Uh, they do other stuff. They've got a day job as well. You know. <laughs> it's unbelievable, really. I'm sure they don't sleep. I, do, you know. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm lucky to keep up with my day job. Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Actually, uh, I did. Alessandra said we should send them helmets. I did just send them as part of the spirit. I gave them a selection of helmets to pick from. So hopefully I'll be sending them helmets and they can uh, have actual helmets as well as the virtual helmets in the near future. <laughs> There'll be four of us on the screen with helmets on. <laughs> um, okay. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.